Hello, parents, and welcome to Sunday School here at Good Shepherd. Mr. Lindy, wanting to take a minute and tell you a little about today's story. It's going to be Peter, and Peter explains his belief in Jesus. So just before we get started, there's a couple links that are included with this. One is for some handouts that further the story a little bit and have some crap that you can work with, a little gingerbread man. So then you can pause the video and go look for those or look for the link um, that's as well at the website. We also have another one for the recipe that Mr. Chris is going to be showing us in the Good Shepherd Kitchen. So um, what's real important about today's lesson though, folks, is that we're talking about how um, our faith in Jesus is the most important thing that we have. You know, we have our hope in that Jesus has died for us. We have to go back and put ourselves in Peter's position that the Lord has died, and that's who he had followed for, for the last few years, and he's ascended up into heaven, and here he is all by himself. He doesn't know what he's going to need to do other than he's here to carry on Jesus' mission, and so he has that faith in that that hope that he knows. So it's not the hope that I hope I get a new bicycle, I hope I get a new Xbox, I hope I get a hundred dollars for my birthday. It's the hope in the, in the future that Jesus speaks about through his death and resurrection. We have hope that we have salvation through the blood of Jesus Christ. So parents, I thank you once again for bringing your students. Be sure to pause along the way or check those links out beforehand and look for the recipe to have a little fun if you want to do that afterwards. But more importantly, to be able to do the uh, craft project, the little gingerbread craft project. Um, thank you very much again. God bless you and see you later. Hey, welcome students to worship as we get started like we always do. We have our offering. Remember I've told you many times, it's not about the money that you put into the offering plate, but Jesus does love it when you give him your pennies, nickels, quarters, dimes. So remember, talk to your parents about how you can give a little bit of that. But what we want to do is give our prayers, give our song, give our praise. So stand up and let's do our offering song. students thank you very much let's put our hands together and pray everybody ready one two three dear God thank you so much for the gifts that you give to us Lord mostly we thank you for the chance we have to come together in your name and seek your Holy Spirit and so father I pray come Holy Spirit fill the hearts of these children that they may truly come to understand their faith, Lord, and that you may fill them with the faith of the, of the apostles and the saints, Lord, that we too may be able to share that goodness and love that you have. So, Lord, we ask that you take these offerings and do your work as you will have it in this world according to your will. And we pray it all now in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, and all of his children say, Amen. Hello students and let's begin our Bible lesson. Again, I want to talk to you about what comes from the Holy Bible. That's where all of our stories come from. And if you look at today's story where it is, you can see it's way at the very end of the Bible. 
Once again, at the back of the Bible, we remember that's the New Testament. Now, if you notice, there's no red writing anywhere on there like Mr. Lindy's Bible has. That's because it's after Jesus has already gone back up to heaven. Remember, we've discussed that, that Jesus, he died, he resurrected, and then he ascended and went back to heaven to be with God. And then you remember that he left us with something. So he said, I'll be with you forever. And we're like, well, how did you do that? By that Holy Spirit. Remember, by the power of the Holy Spirit, it was the dove that came down from heaven when Jesus was baptized. And remember, he landed on the head of Jesus, and we know we have the same thing. Now, there might not be a bird flying down from heaven and land on our head, and there might not be fire, God fire, burning on top of our head, but students, the Holy Spirit comes to our heart and fills us full of knowledge. And do you know how we get that? It's through this word. By reading out of our Bible, 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. Now, I'm going to read for you quickly what it says, and we'll talk about that so that you can better understand. Praise be to God the Father and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who, through faith, are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this you greatly rejoice, though now, for a little while, you may have to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith, of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. So students, what we're talking about here is the Holy Spirit in your heart. And it's something that doesn't go away or fades off. It says it's there forever. It's imperishable. That Jesus has given it to us for all and forever. And so we hold that in our heart and we're willing to share that with others. Because that's our joy. If we have a secret that means so much, we don't want to let that go away. And the part that I want you to remember that's so important, there's things in life you might not see, but you know it's there. Have you ever seen the wind? You might see the leaves blow around or you might see dust, but you can feel the wind and it's there, right? You might be able to eat a cookie and taste the sugar that's in that that makes it so sweet like Jesus' love. But you don't see sugar inside that cookie because Jesus has filled it through the whole body of you. Just like that cookie, the sugar is everywhere in it. And so we let Jesus live in our heart because by that faith, he lives in us. Students, this is how we find it. It's through the Bible. It's through reading his word. It's through the song. Remember, it's through the dance. It's through the prayer. It's through talking and telling other people about how great Jesus is and what he's done in your life. So I ask you students to remember that you don't always have to see something to know that it is real and it is there. And so I pray for you today that you will feel the overwhelming joy of the Holy Spirit at work in your life. Will you join me in prayer? Let's put our hands together and pray. Dear Lord God, we just thank you for this chance to come together in your name. And Lord, we ask that you come out to the children and to the parents and to all the saints gathered, Lord, that you fill our hearts full of your spirit, that we may remain ever joyous in that faith that you have given to us. And Lord God, may it overflow to the point that we share that with others that they too may want to know what is the secret of our love and our joy and our peace, and that we may share 
the redeeming grace of your eternal salvation. And so, Father, we thank you for all of that through the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And all of his children say, Amen. Theo, if I didn't know better, I think you were a chicken. I am a chicken. In a couple days, I'm going to be a mother hen. A mother hen? Yes. Uh, Jordan plugs it. Dad raises chickens, and he said I could have a baby chick when it hatched. How fun! Are you going to watch your baby chick peck its way out of its egg? You betcha! Jordan Plug says the chicken has to work really hard to break out of the out of, out of the hole, and, and I'm going to be there to help. Well, don't count on helping, Theo. The mother hen will come after you. She'll squawk, and she'll peck, and she'll flap her wings. She knows that a brand new chick has to struggle to be born so it will be strong. Wowzers! I would have messed it up if you hadn't told me. Pug says it's all wet and sticky and wobbles around and it's in a circle. Well, the mother hen warms the baby chick until it's all fluffed out. She guards it until it's strong enough to be out on its own. Then she might let you hold it. Wowzers, getting born is really exciting. You know what? Getting reborn is even more exciting. Reborn? You can't be reborn twice. Well, the Bible tells us that each of us can have a second birth. And it's no hard work like your first birth. God has already done all the work for you. You mean God sits on a nest in the chicken coop like there's like the mother hen no god did the work for every one of you he sent jesus to die on the cross so he could give you new birth all you have to do is believe i'm glad about that pecking your way out of an egg is too hard well being reborn means that god comes to live in your heart yikes is there room in there it's kind of small well, God made a special place in kid's heart for himself. If you believe that Jesus died on a cross for your sins so they could be forgiven, God comes to live there. Can you see him? You can't see him, but you sure know he's there. You know he's there because your heart begins to change. You'll want to be more and more like Jesus. Wowzers! Being born again is like being a brand new kid. And all you have to do is believe. That's right. Hello, boys and girls. Welcome to Good Shepherd Kitchen. And today, Mr. Lindy has been talking about belief in Jesus. And you know what believing in Jesus reminds me of? Cookies! Why? Everything reminds Mr. Chris of cookies. Who doesn't love a good cookie? So let's get going and start looking. Let's start baking or making some cookies. Now, the first thing you've got to do, just like when you are believing in Jesus, is you have to get yourself ready to believe in Jesus. And that means when you're cooking, you have to have all of your gear on. Yeah, I've got my hard hat on, and my safety glasses on, and my fire-resistant coat, and my acid-proof gloves. Now, these are very important when you're doing cooking. The next thing you need is good quality equipment. For this project today, we're going to use a high-quality hammer, an electric saw. Now, some people prefer to use the hand saw. But Mr. Chris, he likes his power tools. The last thing that we're going to need is a torch. Now, this is a little torch that I've had sitting around the house for a while. Now, it's not the one I typically like, but I brought it here because my, my torch doesn't fit into my car. Now, Mr. Chris feels like the, 
that the larger the flamethrower that you use while cooking, the higher Mr. the quality Mr. Chris, of... Mr. Yes, Chris, this, yes, does not Mr. Look, Lynn, what, this does not look like you're baking cookies at all. It's no. totally the wrong equipment to bake cookies. It is? It is. Am I making it too complicated? You are making it super complicated, and this is not going to work real well. Do you want to try again? Can, can I? You, you can try Do you guys again. mind if I try it one more time? All right, let's give it a shot. Okay. Thank you, Miss Jolene. You're welcome. So, like Miss Jo Lynn said, making cookies and cooking and believing in Jesus doesn't have to be hard. In fact, what we're doing today is going to be super easy. We're going to make no-bake cookies. That's even easier than making regular cookies. So, to do that, Mr. Chris has made up, uh, put in this pot, a half cup of milk two cups of sugar, a quarter cup of cocoa, and one stick of butter. Then he boiled this for one minute. Ask your mom and dads for help with that. Don't try to do that on your own. So we boiled this up and we got a nice yummy chocolatey, oh so good mixture. Then we're gonna, we're gonna mix that in with our dry goods. We've got in here, we've got one cup of peanut butter, three cups of oatmeal put in there, and one tablespoon of vanilla. Those all go in there and mix them up real quick. Then put in the yummy, super good chocolatey goodness. Oh, I love it. I love cookies. Then we mix it all together. Very good. Oh, gosh, it looks good. Thank you, Mr. Lynn. After we've got those mixed up, we're going to take a scoop, about a tablespoon. I've got a fancy scoop here because I love making me some cookies. But you don't have to have a fancy scoop. Just get a big old honking spoon and put it on there put it onto your cookie sheet. Now the cookie sheet I have here has parchment paper so it doesn't stick and it will be easier to clean up. Now I know mom and dad will be happy about that speaking from experience. So I'm not going to go ahead and put all these up. I have, I have some that I've done up before and as you can see so these went into the oven or into is an no bake cookie, Mr. Chris. Not a no, not a bake cookie. It went into the refrigerator. So this went into the refrigerator for a half hour, and they firmed up, and they are oh so. Good. Oh, Mr. Lindy, this is I'm making some cookies. You like some cookies? Oh, I love cookies. I please. love cookies. Have, have one, man. Have one. Please do. Oh, oh. oh they're so mm. good. This is a good sweet cookie. I, I know. I put a lot of sugar in it. Can't you see the sugar? No, there's sugar there. No, no, I put them in the cookies. You either mean that you're, you're putting it in your mouth. No. no, you already got sugar. I can't see the sugar in there anywhere. I can't. I can't see it either. But it's but a sweet cookie. It is, though. It's really sweet. You know, I know it's there because I can taste it. Mm. It's kind of like Jesus, isn't it? Mm. Because we know that you, if you can feel Jesus, you know he's there. You don't have to see him. No, you don't have to see Jesus. No. Just like I can't see the sugar, yeah, it's there, and I can taste it. I can, I can feel it on my tongue, and so I know Jesus. I can feel Him in my heart, even though I can't see Him. I know I believe that Jesus is there. Yeah, and right, there are very few things that I love as much as Jesus, but sometimes cookies, I think, comes close. Hey, don't don't tell anybody. I was just thinking about that. This sweetness mm. of the cookie reminds me of Jesus and his sweetness That's for us. Great. I never thought yeah. about that, Mr. <laughs> Lindy. Isn't that clever? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chris. Thank You're you very welcome. much. So, boys and girls, I hope you've enjoyed this week on 
Cooking with Mr. Chris in the Good Shepherd Kitchen. Come on back. We're going to do something else in another week. You guys take care of yourselves and be safe. Okay, we're going to do our Lord's Prayer right now. And I hope you guys have been practicing. When I see you again, I want to see, make sure that you guys remember it. So let's go ahead and do it. Our Father, who art in, in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into, into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Great job.